What's up guys? We are fishing the beach today. Not just the beach, but the jetties. So Surfside Beach and Quintana Beach, based in Freeport, have actually one of the longest jetty systems in the United States. Something like a third of a mile going from one end down to the other. Now Galveston has a speed. Galveston has the longest jetty system in the world. But this one has some phenomenal fishing. Now the ocean is probably my favorite place in the entire world. And this is an unbelievably calm day. I was expecting to come out here and just see, you know, waves crashing over the sides of these rocks. But it is just almost flat calm. And already I can see some mullet jumping out of the water. You can see over there behind me is a comorant taking off. I saw a couple of dolphins back there. So I think today's a good day. All signs of predators hunting and prey fleeing. And when you see predators and prey on top of the water, you know they're down beneath the surface as well. All right, this looks like a great spot right here, I think, to begin with. So this huge tree that's been lodged here, probably in one of the most recent storms we've had, is gonna make a great spot to set up our camera. And this is about where I want it to be in relation to the end of the jetty, how far out I want it to be to fish today. But look, look right there, something interesting to show you already, look at that. Check this out, big southern stingray. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of baffled by this. I thought for sure when I picked up the stingray, the one thing that we would find is that the stinger had been cut off. So that's what a lot of fishermen do when they catch these. They just cut the stingers off and leave them to die. But there's the barb right there. This is a southern stingray. You can tell by the shape of its body in relation to its size. There's a few other species that are the similar shape, but they're much bigger. They live, uh, live a little bit further east. Anyway, southern stingray, that barb right there is coated in a toxic mucus, which when that stabs into you, you'll notice it is serrated. Turn it right there. Yeah, you can see it's serrated. That'll stab into you, whip back out. They can do it with incredible accuracy, incredible precision. Uh, that just causes a disgusting necrosis that will last for months and months and months. Anyway, a really cool animal. You can see these dermal denticles running down his back here. And I would never do this if he was alive. He's, he's, he's very dead, although very freshly dead. There were no birds on him. I mean, he smells like a dead fish, but he's not rotting. You can see his eyes here and here on the surface of his body, on the top of his body. Right behind his eyes, you can see these little openings. These are sphericals here and here. That is where he breathes in. So water is taken in there. And if you look under his body, here's his mouth. That's the stingray's mouth. And underneath are his gills, the exit the ventilation for his gills. So water comes in through the top, out through the bottom. Really cool animal. What I did is I took our spoon off, put it aside, and I have actually got uh, a double rig set up, a double drop rig. So it's like a drop shot where your weight's at the end and your hooks are in the middle. You've got two hooks. And I put a very small one on this rod, a little bit of shrimp on the end of each hook. And I'm gonna try to see if we can't catch some whiting or some piggy perch, maybe some uh, pinfish. Just feeling the line with my finger here. Touch ledgering is essential for bait fishing like this in the ocean because most of these ocean fish have uh, sharper teeth than a lot of freshwater fish do. So they are more likely to actually cut your bait away without any visual signal. So you just gotta feel for them and then strike. Except for a croaker. A croaker will just inhale anything and take off. They're kind of like catfish in that respect. Oh, 
missing. Oh my gosh. This is a beautiful fish. I hope I get him in. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, no, 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 no. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to lift him over this last cross up, cutting my own line. And he's ours. Yes. Yes. Oh, beautiful fish. Woo! Check this out, guys. Big, beautiful black drum. Not as big as they get, but a lovely fish nonetheless. You know what it kind of reminds me of? In body shape and the dorsal fin and all that, it kind of reminds me of a buffalo a little bit. But wow, what a fish. Oh, fantastic. Here, let me turn the camera around so you can see them in better light. There you go. Look at this, guys. Beautiful, beautiful fish. And this one is still kind of young. They have these stripes, black drum do, when they're still fairly young. The older they get, the more of this drab gray color they become. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous specimen. Gave me a pretty decent fight. I caught him. Let me show you. I caught him on this bass rod here, but what I had put on the end, it's a little hook like that. Oh, big one. Yeah, good size one. See that? See him? The black drum. See him? Uh, yeah. See him? Uh, no, see that. Anyway, a cool thing about these fish, if you look right under his chin there, you'll see those barbels just like a catfish. I mean, they're not long whiskers, but same purpose, uh, sensory perception while he's hunting. Now, this fish is probably, you know, the right size uh, in terms of bag limit to keep him. And this is actually what they say, if you are interested in catching black drum for food, this is about the right size to eat them. You don't want them a lot bigger than this or the meat doesn't taste very good. Now, I've had him out of the water long enough, so let's put him back. Ooh, yeah, so excited, so excited, all right. Um, I'm just going to point you guys at the water because it is so slippery out here. It is so slippery out here that one wrong move, one wrong move and I would lose my camera, I'd lose my phone. So I don't know if you guys can see this, what your view is, there you go. I'm actually just going to toss this fish about eight feet out in front of me because I can't physically walk down on this uh, slippery algae here. So say goodbye. He's going to swim free. And he's gone. I know that seems a little bit like it's not good for the fish, but you know, these guys, these aren't the delicate freshwater fish we've been catching. They're not carp or, you know, bass. They're way tougher than that. The sea is a much harsher environment than fresh water and the fish have to be much tougher because of it. So, lots of fish slime. Let's get our towel, wipe our hands off after we run them through our hair. I'm so excited, I'm so happy. Anyway, great day of fishing already. We've just gotten started. Let's see what else we can do. Missed it, missed it, but he'll be back. That was definitely the take of a whiting. Yeah, I took the bait clean off. It's the great thing about light tackle fishing is that uh, you can afford to lose bait because you're only using little bits. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking pieces of shrimp, small pieces of shrimp, and putting them over the hook just so that the tip is exposed but I don't want the majority of the shrimp to be up on the shank of the hook. When that fish bites, they go like this. They go bang, 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 and then they're gone. So the moment he hits it, I want the point already in his mouth. So all I have to do is flick the wrist in these hooks. Cast back out. You know, I'd love to catch another black drum like that, but I'd also love to show you another species 
I think that's my favorite part about doing this, fishing in the ocean for sure. You know, you never know what you're gonna get. Well guys, I started to reel in, and I didn't even realize it, but I had a fish on the line. He took that hook deep, but we can get it out. This is what is referred to as a piggy perch. And you can hear why, because he makes pig noises. But anyway, really lovely animal. If you look right by his cheek region, you can see that iridescent blue and orange color. Just lovely, gorgeous patterns. Upside down for a moment. That tends to calm a lot of fish down. See? Yeah, I know he's kind of calm. Anyway, really beautiful iridescent patterns on this guy. Just lovely. They like to live in the rocks. That's where you're going to catch them. You're not going to catch them out on open sand flats or anything like that. They love the rocks of the jetties. Just. Haha, caught you that time. Beautiful, beautiful fish. So let's get our broken, quote unquote, hook disgorger out. The reason I say broken with quotations is because it actually helps us unhook fish like this one that take the hook deep a lot easier than the other one that's not broken. Just like that. Beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. And we're gonna throw him back so he can swim and hunt little shrimps <laughs> and maybe be caught on light tackle another day. Just lovely. And he's gone. All right, let's get the shrimp back out there. Let's see if we can't catch another fish. Guys, this is unreal. Check this out. We were walking back. I was walking back up to have a cast into the shallows and I have just found a dead fish that I have never seen in the wild before. A puffer fish. Look at that. That is so cool. Wow, what a unique animal. Here you can see his mouth up front right here. It's his mouth. It's where his eye would have been. Here's his gills. Wow, coming down here, you got his pectoral fins, the caudal fin, the tail fin, and then these spines all up and down his body. You can see that very ornate pattern that once covered this fish. Would have been a lot of yellow, dark brown to black. It's his stomach. Really, really cool. Wow, what a neat, neat find. Man, I wish we could have caught him when he was alive. But still, finding one dead, just how cool is that? All right guys, got a third species to show you. Live species, that is. A very small southern whiting. Now this is actually, and you can probably tell by looking at it, this is actually an incredibly close relative of the black drum that we had a little bit earlier. Same family of fish. This is a small one, very small one. And when they're smaller, kind of like black drum, when they're smaller, they have the same stripe pattern, the same stripe pattern, and then they kind of lose that, and they have this more of this tan gold sheen to them as they grow larger. And a southern whiting can maybe get about 10 inches in length, maybe weigh about a pound, two pounds at most. I've caught them that size before, but really lovely fish, super cool little animal. Hey guys, that about does it for me. I don't know how we can top a pufferfish and a whiting and a black drum 
a dead stingray and a picky perch all in one day. Just a variety of species. And that's the best thing about coming out to fish on the ocean is just you never know. You never know what you're going to get. One could say it's like a box of Cracker Jacks. Because you know it's got a Cracker Jack box with a prize in it. You don't know what the prize is going to be. Do you, you think I was going to say something else?